Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about three different stocks. We're going to be talking about Healthier Choices Management, HMC, Cyberlux Corp and Eyeless International. These three stocks are talked about on the channel for quite a while and we haven't done a video on them. But I want to quickly come back for an update because I know there are obviously still viewers who are holding onto it or who want to know more about it. There's a lot of news that all three companies are performing very well. We're going to be talking about the second quarter results which had a 553% revenue increase for Eyeless. For Cyberlux Corp, a 240% increase over Q1. And for HTMC, we've seen a lot of things. We've seen what they've done this year. We've seen how they have you know, come true to their year end letter. And we're going to be looking at their Q2 earnings as well. I have made a more detailed video just on HMC, so if you guys want to feel free to go find that and watch that, feel free to do so yourself. And without any further ado, let's get straight into the video. So the first thing we're going to be looking at is Healthier Choices Management, ticket symbol HCMC. And now, like we said, if we just quickly take a brief look, during this year of 2022, HCMC has done a few things. They announced their first Healthy Choice Wellness Center licensing agreement back in February. They had then the acquisition of Mother Earth Storehouse. They announced the grand opening of Healthy Choice Wellness Center at Fort Lauderdale, Florida. They showed their fourth quarter and fourth fiscal year for 2021, which was extremely good. They showed their first quarter, which was super good. They showed a new contract. They showed their new, showed their new deals. And then they showed their second quarter, which again was a massive improvement as well. One brief look, it's obviously a 6.1 million revenue for the Q2 of 2022, which is extremely well. Now, if we could take a look at HMC, we can understand that they are actually on track. A lot of people are worrying that HMC is a company that's going to fail. But if you look at what they said and look at what they delivered, they've actually done very well. One of the first things they said was grow their revenue base through a larger footprint in brick and mortar. Now, we definitely seen this because firstly, they acquired Mother of Storehouse, which increased their thing, increased their revenue. We then look at the balance sheet and we can see that their total sales was 6 million as opposed to 2021 of 3.3 million. We also see a quarter increase where if we're looking at Q1 of 2022, it was 5 million and then going to Q2, 6.1 million. So that's an increase of over $1.1 million. And so we are seeing an increase in how HMC is performing. If we go down here and kind of take a look at the cash, pretty much nothing has been spent during this kind of um, quarter. There's a change of roughly a $1.2 million. But again, we've seen their revenue also go about $1.2 million. And again, we know that that's how they're growing. And in fact, this is actually doing very well for them. So this is something that is very good. A lot of other things such as, you know, um, expanding on the intellectual property. Now that is still something we haven't yet seen. And we definitely do want to see that. But again, guys, we've seen their kind of approach towards this year with cutting down on vape stores, but increasing vape patterns. Now, again, like I said, we still yet to see that but we still have a few months before the year end, so a lot to be waiting out for. Increase their profitability, which is something that I've actually seen them do. In terms of the loss from operations, we definitely saw improvements. Now, they're still at a net loss, right? So that's something you have to understand. And again, you could be looking at why 2021 they were making money, but 2022 they're not. You guys gotta understand in terms of how much they're spending right now. And so that is still something to be um, solved on. But regardless, I definitely have seen improvements. And that's for HCMC. And like I, get, like I said, guys, there's been a lot of movements happening. There's been a lot of things done and achieved this year. And so all things aside, you know, for HCMC, I think there's a lot of good prospects to be looking for. One definite thing to be looking at as well, and again, very important, was obviously their case against Philip Morris. Now, this obviously isn't being talked about anymore or as much, but definitely this is something that is still there. Now, we already know that this is going to take a very long time. And so that's why we're not expecting it in this year. But nevertheless, this is still something we can be looking forward to. And again, a lot more interesting thing happening for HMC in the future. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. But pretty much for HMC right now, I do see a very good future. I have actually doubled down even further on HMC because I believe in what they're going to achieve in two, three, four, five years. My approach for HMT right now isn't for short term. I've kind of, you know, for those people who have stayed on this channel, have definitely made money short term on HMC if you guys have been following the videos. But right now my approach is approaching for the long term and I am just trying to buy more shares as I can at a price level where I deem good. But that is for HMC. Now the next one we can be looking at is Eyelids International. And a quick look at Eyelids International 
And this is actually something that I said was going to happen, given the market condition, given what's happening. We saw Eilis pretty much at this area and we talked about how he's going to actually fall down to the support area where it made that low over here. And that's hence why I drew this box. Now, we have actually ended a bit further down, as you guys can see, a break of structure where this was the previous low indicated by the line I just drew. And we are now below that level. But always understand that a level of support is a box, not a strict line. There are times where strict lines are used as a pivotal point and whatsoever, but normally supports are given as an area and not just a strict line. So yes, we have broken the market structure, but again, we are actually holding on to this rough level of support. And I am curious to see what's happening with Eilis, but we are going to that oversold territory. And so right now, that's why I'm not too fast and too worried that this has have broken the market structure, because firstly, there is a support here that I am aware of. And we're also going to that oversold. And when we do bounce back in from that oversold area, we're definitely gonna be looking at upside movement. In terms of Eilis fundamentals, like I said, Eilis confirmed the second quarter of 2022 results, including a 553% revenue increase over its previous quarter to 19,670,222. Some of the highlights for the month ended June 30th, 2022 are as follows. Firstly, their revenue sitting at $19.6 million, extremely well. The net profit at $1.1 million, EBITDA at $1.65, assets sitting at $55.3 million and working capital at $9.6 million. So they still have a lot of things. They have improved a lot of things. You know, we've already known that this is the company that is growing. This is a company that has a lot of potential. And we are seeing this right now. Just from one quarter, they've seen an increase of 553%. They still have a working capital of 9.6 million, so we are able to see them to actually produce more results and more outcomes for us in the upcoming future. And for Eilis right now, like I said, guys, with the market condition, it's not something shocking to see Eilis dropping, but rather understand that right now they are definitely undervalued for what they're worth. And what we can do, and again, this is for long-term investments, is to understand that we can average down on price because definitely it will come to a point where what they have achieved will reflect in the value of the company and again, reach their long-term goal of obviously reaching the NASDAQ. And this is what we have to see. Bear in mind that this is an OTC company, a penny stock company right now that is producing results like this, that is having an increase of 553% per quarter like this. So they're definitely undervalued and I definitely think that within a span of a year that they will definitely come to the value that they should be and we will definitely be seeing a massive increase. Now, nevertheless, there will be more stocks as well for the short term. If you guys are curious on that in terms of how to make money short term, I'll definitely be talking about stocks like that as well. So don't worry. But that's what I want to talk about, Eilis. And then our last stock to be talked about is Cyberlox Corp, CYBL. Now for CYBL, it is at an interesting position where, again, we are met with resistance at 0 0.0125. That is something I highlighted. We're not yet at the lows. We've seen plenty of times where there's resistance in this area. And that's where we are at right now. We're seeing a lot of fluctuation. We're seeing kind of the ranging movement where we are right now. It is somewhat of a downward movement, but again, you know, there isn't a market structure being broken anywhere soon or anywhere right now that you can see. So there's nothing too much to be worrying about in terms of the technical analysis. The fundamentals, in fact, is actually even more positive where we're seeing that they're delivering record quarterly revenue of 8.31 million and net income of 2.99 million for quarter ended June 30th, 2022, which, by the way, is a 240% increase over Q1 2022. So we see all these companies doing extremely, extremely good fundamentals, extremely good increase. And again, that just shows the prospect that they have for long term. If down here, we look at it, they grew their revenue by 2 million to 8.3 million, an increase of 32.9% quarter to quarter. If we look at some of the highlights, like we said, firstly, the increase in revenue, the revenue from operations beating the plan by 22.1%. Their revenue for operation for the six month ended beat the plan by 28.8%. And again, you know, just talking about the success of the company's growth strategy on a year over year basis. And so pretty much CIBR, like I said, is also in a similar position with Eilis. And again, right now, I don't think in terms of the technical, there is any short-term opportunities to make money. If there were, obviously I'll be making a video, but I wanted to mainly make this video in terms of the whole, the investors who are still in this for the long run and just brief you guys where it is. And, you know, fundamental wise, very well, technical wise, still very well, no break of market structure for Cyberlux whatsoever. 
And so not too much worrying about, and in fact, it's actually a good area to even be averaging down your price at. Anyway, guys, that's it for the video. I'll catch you guys next time.